Hi, everyone. So I have been living in Microsoft Teams for a while, and it is so nice to be able to finally share this broadly. I'm going to demo what's in the product now, as well as a few things that you'll see closer to GA. So uh, let me draw your attention all the way to the left to what I refer to as the app bar. This is where you get to your activity, your, team, your private chats, your teams, meetings, and files. I'm going to start in the Teams section, and I'll work my way around. So here you can see that I've got a team called the Graphic Design Institute selected. And uh, we're talking about a big art and media festival that we're putting on. So uh, a team is a group of people that are organized around a common goal. They can be organizationally bound. They can be project teams. They can be V teams. But the key here is that these are high velocity and highly collaborative in nature. Now within a team, we have the idea of open conversation channels. So anyone on the team can jump in and join the conversation. Channels that have activity go bold, as you can see with grants and the social media channel. And uh, whenever there's activity that's directed at me, you'll see a red badge count uh, next to that channel. Now I can be a member of multiple teams, because we expect that in a large organization. I'm going to jump around between project team to project team. So we've made it really easy to be able to dive into another team. Right here in the left rail, I can dive in, do my work, and then jump back to the other team I'm working on without having to switch out of my UI. So uh, let's dive into the Art and Media Festival channel and take a look at uh, the team chat experience. So the first thing you might notice is, yes, this is a threaded chat experience, and that means it keeps topics grouped together, makes it easy for me to scan the conversation stream, and also choose which conversations I want to be a member of. Now, the first message over here is directed explicitly at me. And when that happens, we place a red flag right next to the message here. So again, as you're scanning through the conversation stream, it's easy to pick out the messages that are targeted directly at you. Messages can also have titles, like you can see in the City Council update. And it's really easy to embed objects, like images, in the Emerging Artists thread here. And you can embed files. Uh, it's also really easy to embed GIFs from Giphy. I love this one. Uh, and um, stickers and um, emoji as well. Now I can also pipe in third-party experiences and connectors into my channel. So here I have a Twitter connector wired up. And basically we've set this to work as, a, as whenever there's an update to the School of Fine Art where they're tweeting about something related to our festival, it pushes a message into the conversation stream. And because we have threads, we can have a conversation around this object. I can also bring in bots like Polly. Polly is one of the most popula popular collaboration bots out there. And we're using Polly to help us decide, hey, where should we take the artists after the reception? Let's take a poll on the team. So some of the options are Art of the Table, Tilt, Bateau, Tin Table. And uh, Polly will go and take this object, insert it into the stream, of, uh, and then everyone gets a chance to vote. So uh, everyone's had a chance to vote, and it looks like Art of the Table, one of my favorite restaurants, is the winner. Um, and it looks like Tucker is really excited as well. Tucker's added a meme into the conversation. And uh, I'll show you how he created that using the product in just a minute. Uh, it's also easy to add um, uh, important messages. And we're leveraging the concept of red bang in this, uh, in this message. So whenever that happens, the channel in the left rail will get a little red exclamation mark next to it, letting you know that there's something important here to, to come and take a look at. So let me go ahead and, and send a few messages. So uh, I could easily like this message. Um, I'll go and respond to this. So you know what? Let me actually call someone's attention. So I'll start with the at symbol. I'm going to look for Tucker. He's one of my main guys. So we have a pop-up that pulls in the users that are the people that I tend to interact with the most. So I'll grab Tucker from in here. And I'll say, hey, I'm about to go and meet the artists. Uh, whoops. I'll let you know how it goes. All right. So I'll send that. Now Tucker will get a notification in his activity bell all the way in the app bar, letting him know that I've mentioned him and that he has a message to come and take a look at. So, uh, so let's you know, go on the road. Let me um, take my mobile app with me. It's a great way for me to stay on top of what's happening with my team. We have mobile apps across all the platforms, Windows Phone, iOS, Android. And it's a great companion app. So across the bottom, you'll see that familiar app bar. I have my alerts. I have my private chats and my teams. Now let me dive back into that art and media festival channel that I was just looking at. You can see that message I just posted and that conversation stream that I was just showing you guys. So um, let me go ahead and send a message here. You know, met with the artists. The artists. Uh, let's brainstorm later. Okay. 
All right, so I'll send that off to Tucker. Um, and let's go back to my demo box, actually. So now I'm back at the office, and I want to go heads down. I want to get some work done. Actually, you see that message I just sent. Um, and so I want to draw your attention to the top of the channel. And this is uh, the tab framework that Kirk was mentioning. And so at the top of every channel is a place that teams can go in to pin services and tools that they access frequently. And so it's in context to the channel and the conversation that you're having. You know, we store an enormous amount of uh, knowledge in our heads. There's a lot of links to tools and sites that we use frequently, a lot of services. And we wanted to provide a way for teams to take that collective knowledge and unload that and place that in a place that everyone can access. So when a team is created, we provision a SharePoint automatically behind the scenes and there's a folder representing every channel so that I have all of my files at my fingertips. I don't have to go hunting around for the URLs of the files or worry if I have the latest. I can go and I can choose one of these files and open it up in the client like Microsoft Word or I can actually click on it and just look at it right here in Microsoft Teams. And you'll notice that that conversation thread that was associated with the file, that's brought over here to the right and I can continue the discussion right here. Now similarly, we've done the same type of thing with notes. So we're embedding one note right into the experience. Because as you look at a conversation stream, it's often scrolling out of view, it's ephemeral in nature, and we thought it'd be a great way to have a place to store long-term knowledge, stuff that's more evergreen in nature. And so what we're doing here is I've got my list of workshops, this is our draft list, we're editing it, we're keeping it up to date, and it's really nice to have this right here at my fingertips and not have to chase it down in a message somewhere. I've also pinned our budget up here, so we're always working off of the latest numbers. And then I have our Power BI dashboard right here. So we're looking at our analytics on Twitter, and I can interact with it right in this space. Of course, I can always go into Power BI directly and do it from there, but it's really nice to have this dashboard right here because oftentimes these types of tools are in the hands of the few on the team. And so what we wanted to do is be able to democratize that knowledge and share it so that everyone is working smarter together. Now for the Art and Media Festival, there's a lot of tasks that we're tracking. And so we've integrated Planner into the experience as well. So I can see all the tasks that we're looking at. I can go in, I can make an edit, I can change something here. Let's change the due date. Let's move that out a little bit. Um, and then any updates I make are automatically updated and the team can see it right away. So there's no lag right there. So you can see how this starts to bring in all of the Office 365 services into a really cohesive experience. And so this top bar, the tabs, they're not just for Microsoft services. There's also a way to plug in third parties into our tab framework. And so if I click on Zendesk here, these are all the service tickets that are, that are associated with our um, event website. I can look through it and check if there's any big issues that I need to look at, but it looks like everything's okay. So, so this is a really nice way for me to just unload my brain, get access to all the tools I tend to use in one place. All right, so with all of this activity happening, how do I stay on top of what's going on with the team? And so that's where you go into the activity bell up here in the app bar. This is where you go to see any mentions that are directed specifically at you, any replies to threads that you're on. You can also see all the conversations that are happening and all the channels that you're, that you're tracking. And so think of this as your inbox. This is how I start my morning. While I'm over here, let's go into the chat experience. Um, so first, let me talk about bots, and I'm going to talk about two bots. The first one is called T-Bot. T-Bot is our intelligent help system bot, and what it does is it sits on top of our help system and it helps you answer questions about using the product. For example, how do I post a GIF? And just like I showed you, it shows you how to get into that you know, smiley face and, and pick one of those. I can also type in something like, how do I create a channel? And then T-Bot will go in and surface up any, any content that's related in our help system to the question I've asked. Now you can have two interfaces into a bot. You can have this conversational interface or you can have a browse interface. So I can go into the tabs along the top and have access to our help system. I can look at our videos if I choose. And it's really nice to be able to go in through a search interface and also a browse. Now the second bot I want to show you is one I really like. It's called WhoBot. WhoBot sits on top of the Microsoft Graph and, um, and it answers questions about people. So I'll scroll up a little bit, and I have a question here that says, hey, who is Ben Walters? It's someone I've been working with. I want to know a little bit more about him. And so WhoBot surfaces up his manager, recent files he's been working on, collaborators. But I could also ask it questions about subject matter experts, like who knows about ticket sales? And it surfaces up people that are talking about this topic. So WhoBot sits on top of our, our graph. It pulls out things like, hey, Barbie's talked about ticket sales 14 times. She's been mentioned four times. 
and it pulls out a set of people that are related to this query. So this is something that's really exciting. There's a lot of intelligence here. Because it's built on Office 365, we have a lot of knowledge in this system that we can leverage to build this bot out. All right, so let me talk to a real person. Let's go and talk to Tucker. So again, in our, in our conversations, I have um, the ability to have a space between us. I can look at the files that we have in common, the ones we've shared, uh, the notes that we have. I can also look up Tucker's organization. And we're leveraging Active Directory to pull out identity and org info. Um, but let me go back to the conversation for a second. Tucker's mentioned, hey, a few of us are brainstorming in the Future Ideas channel. Hop on when you're free. All right, got it. Be there in a second. All right, so what Tucker's referring to is the idea of having um, an open meeting. And so in this Future Ideas channel, what you'll notice is there's a video icon right next to it. And that means there's an open meeting happening right now. So similar to how you would see a set of people huddling around a desk in an open office space, this is the digital equivalent. So these guys have been talking for a little while. It looks like a while. Um, I can see who's in the conversation, and I can choose to join that conversation. And so this is a really low friction way of going face to face, jumping in a meeting. They could be ad hoc. They could be scheduled. Hey, guys, how's it going? I can't wait to brainstorm with you guys. Um, and we're leveraging Skype for video and calling. All right, so I think I'll stop uh, the demo right there. OK, so um, some of the big features are that we have a threaded chat experience. And so um, conversations are grouped by topic. And it's easy for me to go in and choose which topics I want to be involved in. So um, all, the top, all the conversations here are threaded. I am explicitly called out in, um, in this message. And when that happens, I get a flag over here that tells me that this message is directed at me. I can title messages. I can also go in and embed objects like images right into the message. I can embed documents. I can actually go and click on this document right here, and the conversation stream is brought over as well. Uh, let's go back to that conversation. Um, let me scroll up. I can embed um, GIFs from Giphy right here, um, as well as stickers and, um, and third-party services like Twitter. Uh, I can configure them to push messages in, uh, depending on a handle or a hashtag that I'm watching. I can also bring a bot into the conversation stream, like Polly. And so um, Polly is one of the most popular collaboration bots out there. And so we're asking Polly to help us vote on where to take these artists after our reception. And so Polly will put in an object. We can all vote on that object. And then Polly will bring a response back in. Um, we can create memes as responses and messages, and I can mark messages as important. So let me show you how to create some of these memes and stickers. So I can go in, I can click on this smiley, I can choose to send a GIF from Giphy, I can enter a keyword in and preview the GIF before sending it. I can construct a meme and think from one of the set of images, I can set the captions, um, or I can go in, I can take one of our editable stickers, I really love these, and uh, I can go in and change all of the text if I want. So I can say, you know, love it instead. <laughs> uh, and I can insert that into my message. Um, it's really easy to go and attach files, so I can see all of the files that I've recently been interacting with. Uh, we use the Office Graph to do all of that. Pull in all the files that are available on the Teams um, product as well. And then um, I can uh, go in and have an ad hoc meetup with somebody. So this is an open meeting. Oops. I can join in this meeting. And, um, and then Tucker will join as well. And then maybe you can, um, hi. <laughs> I'm going to share it off. Yeah. Perfect. So Tucker's sharing his desktop with me. And so we can collaborate back and forth. I can go and interact with people in our um, private chat experience. So here, I can say, hey, uh, love the face-to-face. Let's keep doing it. And then Tucker can reply with you know, GIFs and emoji and that sort of thing. Um, I can look up Tucker's organization through Active Directory, pull out his org and identity information. Um, we have bots in here also. So this is an example of WhoBot. 
I can ask him questions about subject matter experts and get back responses on who's talking about things the most. Or I can ask him questions about you know people and find out what their organizational structure is, uh, their recent files and collaborators. Um, it's also easy to go and dive into my meetings and get that right from here. So, um, so I think that gives you a pretty high level overview of the product. Is that yes. awesome? Okay.